Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm gonna share with you today something that I really, really love, and that is mineral identification and mineralogy. Now, a big part of this is what we can see with our eyes, and typically in the past, that has been quite expensive. Well, uh, that is starting to change. Back here, this is a trinocular stereo microscope coupled with a camera, like the mirrorless camera that I'm recording this on right now, you can take some amazing images, especially when you add to it an XYZ lifting platform, and we can focus, stack the, these, are, this is something we've talked about uh, a number of times here on the channel. However, the downside to that is the price. The price of that whole setup is, it's, it's honestly a lot. And that is out of reach for a lot of people. Now, going back about four years, uh, I, I did a deep dive into the world of digital microscopes, and I found that they were junk. They were junk. Fast forward three years from that point, a year ago, well, uh, I, I got this. This is the Link Micro digital microscope. Now, um, I was moderately impressed with it. Um, it is HD. So, you know, it's not 4K, super high res. The photos were not great. Um, and I got this thing for free, right? Currently, you can buy this um, for $110 on Amazon. Pretty good deal. Um, I actually, I use it in the end of the videos here a lot. Um, you know, me and Sarah talk about stuff. We put things under here. I slip that video in. It is good enough to do your basic mineralogical work where you're trying to determine structure of things, okay? Um, you are not going to be taking super impressive photos with this thing that you're gonna wanna share. But from the perspective of dipping your toe in the, in the, in the water and uh, testing it out, this is an excellent value. You get dual gooseneck lights, you know, um, and all of that. I didn't necessarily give it a favorable review. Um, it is what it is. And shout out to uh, Link Micro because the way things work in YouTube world is there's generally two types of people. There's people that just shill product and they get everything for free and they say only nice things. And then uh, there's people like me where you only get stuff once because <laughs> you're honest about it. So it's cool that, uh, you know, I didn't exactly give this a glowing review. And when I reached out to Link Micro to try their new 4K digital microscope and do a comparison to see how it works in the world of mineralogy, they said yes, knowing that it may not be the best review. So um, that's what we are going to be doing today. We're gonna to be looking at these things. Um, this guy is like 250 bucks and then there's like a $50 coupon on Amazon. I'll throw links down to stuff below. Um, we're gonna be looking at five, I can count five, five specimens today. Um, and we are gonna be looking at some Azurite, analcine, clinoptolite, gyrolite, and some thompsonite. And we're going to be doing some comparisons here, and uh, let's hop right into that comparison. The main thing you're going to be looking at here is the, the difference between the 7 inch and the 10 inch. We're looking at a piece of azurite here, and you can see we got some cloudiness, some haziness. These are not photos, these are short video clips. This is uh, on the 10 inch 4K. A lot more, cr a lot crisper, if you ask me. And I really gave this uh, a hard go of it. So back to the seven inch piece of anal seam, incredibly small, incredibly small, but we can see that structure of it. Over to the 4K, you're gonna see this kind of focusing in and out. That's normal. Um, we have a very narrow depth of field, so I'm kind of going in and out. Once again, we can totally see the structure and this is hard on things that are very clear, <laughs> uh, like this piece of clinoptolite here, but we can still make out the structure with both of these. We can see the structure quite well, to be honest. However, the 4K one, we get a lot more clarity here. We get a lot more. However, that more narrow, uh, Focal depth is still an issue, and that's always an issue. That's an issue with my optical microscope as well, and that's why we do the image stacking. Um, but once again, we're not in that price range at all. It's not a fair comparison. 
here's some gyro light and uh, the gyro light, gyro light is those little look like uh, creamy balls right there in the middle of your screen moving on into 4k I didn't exactly line this up but you can see we can see both um, stru you know, the structure in both of these now to a little bit of an easier test, we have some Thompsonite coming up here. And uh, being that it is very opaque on a black background, it looks really good under both of these digital microscopes. I do think obviously the colors are a little more true to eye on the 4K, which that is a huge benefit here. Just to be able to like optically see it properly. To give you an idea of how small that piece of anal seam is, it is right there, right? That is teeny, 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 tiny stuff. Okay, we're looking at tiny things here. The photos, I'm gonna show you here the, the five photos that I took of these with the new setup. And the photos are they're not great. <laughs> They're not great. I do not know what is happening with these digital microscopes. Why they can take pretty good video, very serviceable video that we can use, and the photos, they're kind of bleh, <laughs> to be honest. Um, however, you can always take a still, and I've done that. So both of these setups I have done still taking a still image out of a video and that looks way better. That looks way better. So uh, you can still kind of get a picture out of it. Um, both of these have the dual goose neck lights. They are not created equal on the backside, which that is a big, big deal with um, how you just kind of interact with uh, a microscope. Here on my optical, we have a very large knob that allows very, very fine adjustments, okay? Pretty, uh, pretty smooth. And then obviously I would typically be using my XYZ lifting platform, which does ultra, ultra fine movements. The seven inch, um, it's kind of an ordeal to move the head up and down. You have this locking ring and the whole thing kind of goes up and down. And then you have this like, little rack and pinion and it's very not great in my opinion um they, they definitely made some improvements over here on the 10 you can kind of see here the way this works you have this just knob here basically and you can make it smoother go up and down just like that so this thing comes with other stuff right and it comes with like a HDMI cable for sending the image out of this to like a monitor or a television because this screen is not a 4k screen um, I don't think you get, you don't get a 4k screen for 200 bucks um, it's like a 1080p HD screen which is pretty good but it's not like that crisp image that you want you know um, it comes with some other stuff like things for looking at slides but we as a mineralog amateur mineralogists, mineral recognizers, uh, that's not really that helpful. The dual gooseneck light is pretty nice. Um, we have a very dirty piece of barite here, which um, we can look at under here. We will get this guy recording and we can look at this. And uh, I mean, that, I'm sorry, that is pretty good. Like, you know, like, that is very obvious what that is, you know, and uh, we can use this for a lot of different things. And what, the reason I'm sharing this with you is I want you to get excited about the world of minerals, micro minerals, all of that good stuff, because you can finally do it at an affordable uh, price point, I guess. But it's really easy for me to sit here and show you these finely prepared specimens. Um, let's head outside, go out into the field. We're going to do a little bit of collecting and uh, come back and do some identification work using this guy right here. If you watched the video out here by Summit, Utah, out here at the Cinder Cone, um, up this creek back here, this wash area, 
there was a rock with some type of mineral in it. Um, I didn't have a hammer and chisel with me at the time. We were just kind of picking in the wash and uh, I didn't collect any of it. So I don't know what it is. That's what we're doing. We're gonna go collect some of that material. Well, um, there's not any like nice cracks in this, so to start smacking away in hopes that we can get some of this. That is stubborn. So, collect a couple more pieces just like this, but you can see in there that there should be some decent pieces that we can be able to identify. If I could get like two to four more pieces just like this, I will be happy. pieces and then this piece that's got some stuff on it that we can identify and even though it's little don't forget we're using a microscope so we don't need like ginormous pieces to look at things like this are, are perfect oh, tiny crystal Sarah <laughs> It's really smooth on the outside, like it's really weathered. Yeah. So it's good that you can break some off. So we got back and these are the specimens that we collected out there. I did wash these to get any just kind of dust, dirt, little debris off of them, but that's really the only thing I've done. So we're gonna shove these under the, the microscope here in a second, but I do wanna to touch on something. There is a difference between mineral identification, which is like the process we go through of like doing a whole bunch of different tests to determine facts about a mineral, you know, like you can take a thing and be like hardness, uh, gravity, uh, cleavage, luster, determine all of these different things. That can be really hard when we're dealing with uh, little tiny small specimens, okay? So we're getting away from the, the classic mineral identification and more into mineral recognition, which is kind of a harder thing to teach. It comes with time, it comes with looking at an extreme amount of photos and books and different things like that. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a both because when it comes to micros, it can be a little bit of a challenge. Well, let's just uh, grab one of these little guys here and see what we have. You don't need to place things with tweezers, but uh, once you get something like this and you look at your fingers under a microscope, you won't want to show that publicly. <laughs> All right. Well, you can see here, we do have like uh, some green <laughs> moss growing on it, which that's to be expected. I didn't uh, clean the organics off of this, and already I have a pretty good idea of what it is we are looking at here. Um, and we'll look at a couple more uh, just to try to double check, make sure there's nothing that's like an outlier. Um, if you have a clue, what this could be, go ahead and drop that down below. Um, let's take one, we'll take one, this thing here. Okay, um, that's a little massive. Let's find something with some pointy bits. Look at this. Okay, so that one's pretty good, especially right there. So 
based upon all the different things that I know um, and have seen in the past, I would say that this is calcite. And that is often the case. I get emailed a lot of different pictures from different people and, uh, you know, a lot. There's a lot of things out there that mimic or well, calcite will mimic as far as the formation. I mean, you might be thinking of calcite that is cubic or, or not not cubic, but um, this. <laughs> and uh, But if you go head over to Mindat as an example and uh, look at some of these different minerals, you'll see a ton of different forms. However, all right, so the, one of the easy ways that we're gonna be able to test this is we're going to be taking some hydrochloric acid uh, that is diluted down to 10%, so it's like 90% distilled water, 10% hydrochloric, and this is in a acid-friendly dropper. And we'll pick a portion of this that I don't particularly care about a whole lot. How about that right there? And we will put some acid on. Here's a little bit of a test. Now, not all calcites will react to an acid. There we go. Right, how about right there? Do a little more. Well, that's a lot, oh, and you can see that thing fizzing away, okay? So there's my uh, visual kind of interpretation of what we have here, and then we can very clearly see some fizzing action happening. Try to focus right there in the middle. You can see if we uh, punch in as well a little bit, you can see some of that fizzing action happening and coming out there. We can even put some more on and double, double, triple check. Um, yeah. So, um, a combination of things. We're doing some light testing here as well as uh, my own experience, which you can get that experience too by simply looking at books and looking at all kinds of stuff. But this uh, definitely is enough to do these basic mineralogical tasks. I hope you liked this. I think both um, both of these digital microscopes, the one that I've had for like over a year and this guy do a perfectly acceptable job of doing these basic mineralogical uh, identification and be able to just to share it as well. That's kind of the cool thing with this, right? Like you're never going to beat the optics of a stereo microscope. Like it's just digital is never going to be there because we're viewing stuff on the screen the same way as you're viewing this on a screen, not in person. You don't have your two eyes that can converge on something and get that depth perception in the same way. So these would have to get really uh, significantly, I hope they'd have to go up leaps and bounds to try to replicate what you can get out of a stereoscope. Um, well, I think we'll leave this one here. Thank you, everybody. Um, go check out the website, currentlyrockcounty.com. There's going to be a bunch of links down below this video, and you can go check out those as well. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Like, I, I was really... Um, looking down on them for a long time. And they have definitely, the price point of what is good has came down a lot, a lot. And uh, don't, um, you can obviously just run out and buy these things. There is a website that I like to use uh, for kind of like price comparison called Camel, Camel, Camel. And you can take like an Amazon link and you can throw it in there and it will give you the uh, a chart of the price history of something. So you can know if it's a good time to buy or not. And uh, cool, we'll leave this one here. Thanks everybody.